Okay. All right. We're live here on YouTube. Viewers will have a chance to ask questions at the end of the chat. I'm Barry Coleman, Vice President of Counseling and Education Programs for the National Foundation for Credit Counseling. As a reminder, you can submit your questions in the chat box on YouTube at any time. Our experts will address them in order at the end. Be sure to say hello in the chat box so we know you're here. So we're very excited uh, to discuss how credit counseling services can improve the financial lives of our military and veterans. This year, we had the opportunity to honor a very special Marine, Major Sean Worley, who was active duty at Camp Pendleton. Major Worley was a 2018 NFCC Brighter Financial Future Award winner. We learned about the work he's doing to improve the financial lives of Marines from our member agency, Credit.org. Today, we have the opportunity to hear from Melinda Opperman of Credit.org and our military program supporters at Wells Fargo, Darlene Goins and Jerry Quinn. So with that, I'd like to introduce Melinda Opperman from credit.org and allow her to share a brief summary of Major Worley's story. So Melinda. Thank you, Barry, for that introduction. My name is Melinda Opperman. I'm the executive vice president with credit.org formerly known as Springboard Nonprofit Consumer Credit Management Incorporated. That's our full legal name. We go by the rebrand name of credit.org. We've been an NFCC Consumer Credit Counseling Service member since 1974. So 45 years of the National Foundation for Credit Counseling member agency. We were honored to be the award winner of the Brighter Financial Future Award for Military and Veteran Community. Our nominee, as Barry mentioned, was Major Worley, who is stationed at the U.S. Marine Corps Camp Pendleton. Credit.org for the last five years has been providing what's called the Command Financialist Specialist Training at Camp Pendleton. It's a week-long course for E6 and above that are leaders. They are taking this course of which credit.org is one of the briefers on the credit and debt management portion. And it's through that course that we got to know Major Worley, who himself has stellar financial habits. He wanted to be able to take those habits along with the credential of command financial specialists and help the junior Marines. He helped over 50 Marines through the skills he learned through the briefing and the course that we are part of, help those 50 Marines in paying off over $100,000 in unsecured debt and saving almost $150,000. So we thank the NFCC for recognizing our nominee. Thank you, Melinda. If you'd like to hear more about Major Worley's story, check out his video on our YouTube page. The work of our member agencies with the military is made possible from generous contributions from the Wells Fargo Foundation. Now, um, and share a little bit about your role at Wells Fargo. Hi, thanks, Barry. It's Jerry Quinn here. Uh, I am the Military Affairs Program Manager at Wells Fargo. I'm also currently serving Army Reservist with more than 30 years of service on active duty in the National Guard and now today in the Reserves. Since taking on my role at Wells Fargo as the Military Affairs Program Manager in 2012, Wells Fargo has provided $130 million in support to military and veteran families. Uh, a large part of that support has been through financial guidance, financial education resources for our military families. So uh, in, in hopes that we can help equip them for what life brings them. Um, a couple of uh, examples of the things that we support in financial education are um, our hands-on banking teams uh, in our local communities that provide um, free financial education, volunteers from the Wells Fargo team members that uh, 
that just have a heart for their communities and sit down in groups or one-on-one -on -one with military members and their families and provide free financial education. Another uh, organization we work with is Guideposts. Many military families are familiar with Guideposts and their many encouraging booklets and pamphlets that they provide to military families on a number of things. Wells Fargo is proud to be their exclusive provider of financial education for military families. And today we have three uh, guideposts booklets out there to help uh, provide financial resources to those military families. And then of course, our relationship with the National Foundation of Credit Counseling and their members, uh, Melinda Opperman as a fine example, credit.org and all the work that they do and the many NFCC members do across the country to educate military families and help them with their debt issues. Thanks for letting me be here today. Thank you, Jerry. And we, we're so thankful for the support uh, from Wells Fargo Foundation to help our, our military families. Also from Wells Fargo, we have uh, Darlene Goins. Darlene, please introduce yourself and share a little bit about your role there. Thank you, Barry, and thank you for the opportunity to participate in this discussion today. I'm a senior vice president and head of Wells Fargo's Hands-On Banking Program, which uh, Jerry just uh, shared a little bit about. Uh, it's a, an award-winning free financial education and capability program that teaches people of all ages, including youth, adults, seniors, military, and entrepreneurs, the basics of responsible money management. I'm responsible for setting the vision and creating and driving the overall strategy and execution for the program. And this includes advancing the program's resources and digital capabilities, promoting that team member involvement and volunteerism that Jerry spoke about in support of hands-on banking and the consumers that could benefit from um, free financial education responsible for measuring the effectiveness and impact of the program, and then managing community initiatives and collaborations related to financial education. As Jerry mentioned, um, we have a strong relationship with the National Foundation for Credit Counseling, where hands-on banking is a component of the Sharpen program, as well as guideposts with whom we've developed and distributed booklets on financial education, building wealth, and now entrepreneurship to military service members all over the world. I have a real passion for financial education, and so I'm thrilled to be here today to participate in this, this discussion about the military. Thank you so much, Darlene, and, and thank you again to Wells Fargo Foundation. They have been such a great uh, supporter of the military work that the NFCC does. Now we'll move into our time for our for question and answer. We have um, some questions that we will uh, pose to our, our panelists, and then we'll give others uh, an opportunity to, uh, to provide some additional thoughts. So uh, the first question here is uh, for Jerry. Jerry, what are some common financial issues related to living uh, the military life? I'll tell you, the military families in, in encounter a number of things that exacerbate their financial uh, well-being. And um, without proper planning, it can certainly be caused uh, topsy-turvy checking account balances and, and preparation for the future. You know, permanent change of station, which I'll, what, what I'll often refer to as PCS, um, and deployment are common occurrences in military lifestyle. Um, regularly being separated from I think we may have lost uh, Jerry. Okay, so perhaps we'll, we'll come back to, uh, to Jerry here uh, in just a moment. Uh, I do have some additional questions. And uh, this one is for, for Darlene. Uh, Darlene, what are some common financial issues military spouses struggle with? Thanks, Barry. And hopefully, oh, it looks like we have Jerry back. 
Sorry, Jerry, we lost you there just briefly. Terribly sorry for that. <laughs> I, I, hope, I hope I was able to convey the fact that uh, permanent change of station, PCS and deployment exacerbates the family finances. And uh, just imagine what maintaining two households or, or having one of your uh, key partners in caring for your family away from home for extended periods of time can do to the family budget. I certainly uh, can, un can understand that. Uh, I, I myself, like Jerry, um, served in the military 32 years in, in the Air Force and Air National Guard, so I certainly understand uh, the challenges that that, that military life uh, presents. Okay, thank you, Jerry. We're going to move then to um, to our next question, and this is for for Darlene. Again, Darlene, what are some common financial issues that military spouses struggle with? Thanks, Barry. And uh, I think this is going to piggyback off of Jerry what Jerry shared um, pretty nicely um, when it comes to things like PCS and deployments. Um, it often places the burden of family management and day-to-day -day financial decisions on military spouses for an extended period of time. So spouses are often juggling how to meet short-term financial needs, how to plan for the future, and how to manage debt. Emergency savings provide a buffer against unexpected financial shocks, mm -hmm. and research suggests that military members and their families are not typically prepared and could face financial instability. According to the 2018 Military Spouses, Spouse and Family Survey, 82% of military spouses state a financial emergency is a chief concern, and one in three believe they are not prepared at all to meet a financial emergency. The Military Family Advisory Network found that 60% of military families don't have enough in savings to cover three months of living expenses. And then in addition to short-term and emergency savings challenges, the 2018 Military Spouse and Family Survey found that long-term savings are a chief concern for 78% of military spouses. If the service member opted into the blended retirement system last year or was automatically enrolled, the military family, often the spouse, must now actively manage for their retirement, deter determining contribution levels, the best investment options based on their time horizon, whether to invest in a traditional or Roth account or both. And then there's debt, which often presents obstacles for reaching financial goals. The 2018 Military Spouse and Family Survey found that 50% of military families have more than $5,000 and 30% have more than $10,000 in credit card debt. And the frequent moves of military families add the further financial stress on spouses. The Military Fi Family Advisory Network survey found that 54% of respondents had moved in the last two years and 31% had moved more than five times due to military orders. That's, um, I can't even imagine being, um, having never served in the military, I can't even imagine having to make all of those moves. And so it makes it difficult for military spouses to find and maintain employment. According to the Institute for Veterans and Military Families, military spouses are three times as likely as their civilian counterparts to be under, unemployed. A recent Blue Star family survey found that 51% of employed military spouses earned less than $20,000 in 2016. So these are many of the financial struggles that face military spouses as they serve along with their active duty member. Thank you, Darlene. Okay, moving to our next question. And Jerry, this is for you. Uh, how can active duty service members prepare financially for the transition to civilian life? Certainly an important topic there. Yes, absolutely. And, and I would say that, uh, you know, as we've examined the, the needs for the military veterans and their families, we have found that that point in their life transition is one of the most significant financial uh, uh, conditions that can um, affect the military family. So uh, just like Darlene was saying, um, talking about emergency savings, long-term savings for upcoming goals, and of course, planning for your future retirement savings, three different kinds of savings. And sometimes it's hard to save anything at all each month. 
And so we, we absolutely recognize that. We're working with a number of organizations to help try to discover not only why, but what are some of the steps that, can, that individuals can take to save a little bit. And one of the things that we found was even starting small, even if you only save $5 a week today, you know, um, if you, if you uh, turn, turn down that uh, Starbucks latte uh, one time a month, just find something to save to begin the habit and set your goal reasonable, set an initial goal reasonable that, it, you know, $200 or $400 for your initial emergency savings. We believe that that can really help you begin to build a habit, a habit of savings and when you start to make some of your milestones, you'll, you'll be more encouraged to continue. Maybe not unlike a military service member's preparation for the physical fitness test we each have to take. You start small after an injury or after you're coming back from being off for a little while. You start small and you get yourself back in shape. So we encourage you to start small, save automatically and do it regularly, and then begin to set your goals. But the key answer to your question is prepare ahead of time for your transition. Begin preparing for your transition 12 to 24 months before you leave the military service. Save what you can and have it in reserve so that the unexpected can be dealt with after you ETS and in term of service. Yes. Thank you, Jerry. Certainly wise ad advice uh, there. Uh, our next question is for Darlene. Darlene, uh, how can hands-on banking help military members, veterans, and their families? Thanks. So uh, we've talked a little bit about the unique financial circumstances facing military members, veterans, and their families. And in order to support those unique financial circumstances, Wells Fargo launched its hands-on banking for military program in 2013 to help meet the financial education needs at each stage in a service member's career and life. So as a public service provided by Wells Fargo, the hands-on banking program is a free, engaging, non-commercial program available in English and Spanish. You can um, find it at handsonbanking.org. And it teaches people in all stages of life about the basics of responsible money management, including how to create a spending plan, how to save and invest, borrow responsibly, buy a home, and establish a small business. This award-winning program is hosted on a website separate from wellsfargo.com, and it's free from Wells Fargo product and service promotion. And then looking at the military program, it offers 10 individual lesson topics ranging from the basics of banking to planning for retirement and career transitions, such as PCS deployment and transitioning to civilian life. In late 2017, we introduced content to support the needs of service members to learn about the blended retirement system, including how it works, eligibility, how vesting works, how the match works, why military members should start saving early and where to go for more help. So service members, veterans, and their families can access the topics online at their own pace. Um, they can focus on topics that are relevant to them at whatever stage in their career. And then in addition to these lessons, there are hundreds of articles on um, everything from how to make a mobile deposit to how to talk with your kids about money. It's also a component, as I mentioned earlier, of the NFCC Sharpen Your Financial Focus program. And over 100,000 people have been helped through the Sharpen program since its launch in 2013, with about 25% of those people being affiliated with the military. So if you have an interest, please do reach out to NFCC and take advantage of the Sharpen program. There's a, an online money checkup. You can have a one-on-one -on -one counseling session and you can leverage the hands-on banking materials. 
And then, as Jerry mentioned earlier about guideposts, so we recognize that service members may not have access to a computer or a local credit counselor or coach. So we collaborate with guideposts to publish and distribute printed resources based on hands-on banking program content. So we have financial readiness, sound principles for success money management, which provides education on the basics of banking, the need for emergency savings as a buffer against financial shocks, using credit responsibly, and the basics of investing. The second edition, Building Wealth, Time to Plan for Your Future, discusses the difference between having money and building wealth, and it includes a section on the blended retirement system. And then we have a third edition that is coming um, that is focused on entrepreneurship. So through our online resources at handsonbanking.org, our print resources with guideposts, and then in-person group and one-on-one -on -one sessions in collaboration with NFCC, Hands on Banking for Military has been shared with more than 1 million military service members, veterans, and their families since July 2013 when we launched it to help really address these very unique financial ch challenges that we've discussed today. Hey, uh, Barry, I, I'd, sure, like to, uh, I'd like to jump in and give a shout out to Darlene and her team for the Veteran Entrepreneurship Booklet that we will be introducing this spring. Darlene and her team made sure that that booklet would have some um, key resources for military spouses. We recognize that military spouses go through a lot in their career and sometimes cannot m manage a long-term career because of all the moves. Some of them decide that entrepreneurship might be just their thing. And this booklet, when we introduce it, it'll be helpful um, to find resources for those military spouses that are considering entrepreneurship as another source of income for their family. That's wonderful. And we look forward to, to seeing that. And thank you so much, um, both Jerry and, and Darlene and we know that the hands-on banking for military program is certainly a valuable resource uh, for our military families. Jerry, I got a, another question here for you. Um, now, you've been working with, with the NFCC and its member agencies for a number of years now. Um, how do credit counseling services, in, in your opinion, help to improve the financial lives of military members, veterans, uh, and their families? That's a, a good question, Barry, and I, I want to refer back to the tremendous uh, statistics that Darlene brought to this conversation earlier in the call. Um, I mean, when we look at, at military families and the lack of emergency savings or the incredible debt that they're carrying, we recognize that there's more that we can do to help and to provide good, solid information on the best way to handle your finances. You know, when I was a young private in the military, I finally had gotten promoted to E3, private first class. And uh, the local base exchange automatically sent me in the mail my first ever credit card. And they had a pre-approved limit for me for $750. How much do you think the TV is, the cost, the very next day at the PX that I bought? Yep, you got it. $750. You know, I maxed out my credit the first chance I had. And I was a private first class. I had no business spending that kind of money. And uh, I learned a lot. Today, 25 years after becoming a banker, <laughs> uh, certainly I've learned a lot along the way. And I would highly recommend people to reach out to uh, family members or others in their network that um, have financial capability. Find your local major whirly. Find that individual and have that person help you along the way in making good debt choices and find those places where you can save. So counseling, I think, is crucial. I mean, it wasn't until I finished my finance degree that I really had an understanding of my of my finances. Not everyone needs a finance degree, mm -hmm. but you can always use a coach or a partner to help you make good decisions. Good, great. Thank you so much, Jerry. Okay, our next question is for uh, Melinda. Uh, Melinda, what 
other financial services do nonprofit financial counselors offer for veterans and their families? Great question, Barry. Um, we provide a credit counseling, credit coaching program, and we help our veterans and our active duty and their families establish a household budget, answer questions about credit management. If they have a goal of home ownership, we help them come up with a client action plan and set some goals on that option of you know, asset building, wealth building. Um, as Jerry mentioned, you know, starting small, thinking big is so important. And as Darlene mentioned about the savings, it's mission critical. Financial readiness is mission readiness. And so we provide the counseling as an NFCC organization that involves credit counseling, debt management, housing counseling, on uh, last resort would ever be a bankruptcy. You would definitely want to speak with your command before you ever even considered anything like that. But NFCC credit counseling agencies do provide pre-bankruptcy credit counseling, bankruptcy counseling, as approved by the Executive Office of the United States Trustee. But that is something you would never want to even consider without talking to your command because your security clearance is so important to your military career. Wonderful. Hey, Thank Melinda, you. those are great, great points. As a, uh, as a leader in the United States Army today, I wish, I wish I could carry that statement around with me to my various commands that I work with and remind them just how crucial it is to manage your finances in a responsible manner. And that even if you haven't up to now, the best time to start is today. And an uh -huh. NFCC, the NFCC counselors are easily accessible from nfcc.org. You type in your zip code and you'll be, uh, you'll be given a host of choices to contact a credit.org or other affiliated NFCC member agency who can literally right away begin helping you with your financial needs. That's a good point, Jerry, because the fact that they can reach out to somebody at the NFCC, one of our certified counselors, coaches, is so important because sometimes they don't know where to go and who to trust. And there's predatory lenders out there um, that are not in their best interest, as we know. And if they contact a credit counselor with the NFCC, they're going to get uh, excellent advice that they can trust. If they're scared to let their command know they're having a problem, contact us and we'll get them the correct and sound advice. Very good. Thank you. And Melinda, as, as a follow-up, so when should a, a military member consider contacting a nonprofit financial counselor for help? Early. Um, don't procrastinate. Um, contact us early. There's something in the human brain about denial and procrastination. I think it's a way of letting us cope, right? Mm -hmm. um, but in this regard, contact us right away. Get the help. It's confidential when you contact us. Um, we will be able to help you with some solution options you may not be aware of. And let's face it, having a financial setback is not um, something to be embarrassed about. It's often out of our control. And if the situation does escalate to a point where um, command ever did become aware, you would be able to show, I did act responsibly. As soon as I became aware I had a problem, I reached out to nonprofit National Foundation Credit Counseling Organization and I got help. And that shows you are being proactive and you are being responsible. Thank you. And so, uh, Melinda, are, are there other forms of assistance uh, that the military community should know about besides um, nonprofit credit counselors? Yeah, that's, that's a great question, Barry. There are so many resources out there that are military and veteran friendly that your credit counseling agency is going to know about. We have a database, it's all geared by code where you live, and we have a whole array and full service uh, options that can help 
military and service members that we will let them know about. All of that we document in what's called a client action plan that we will email or snail mail to the service members so they have all of that uh, available and handy. And also that's another tool they can have if anything did ever escalate to command to show that look, in this um, time frame, some time ago, I did reach out and I did get help and I did act responsibly. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you all, all so much. I think uh, we have some time now uh, for viewer questions. So we'll, we'll pause here to see if we've got uh, any questions from uh, our viewers. Okay, still, still waiting to see if we've, we've got any questions here. Barry, while we're waiting, maybe um, sure. a little bit more about um, saving for emergencies. I know we've touched on it a little bit and Jerry talked a little bit about, um, you know, starting small and setting a, an achievable goal, a realistic goal, um, you know, just trying to save a few hundred dollars so that you can um, handle an emergency such as, you know, you need a new tire that happened to me a couple of weeks ago. Now my dishwasher has gone out. So now I need a dishwasher. Um, Starting small and and you know saving five or ten dollars a week um, can quickly add up, um, but then how do you come up with that five or ten dollars a week? And so, some um, suggestions there are really to start by understanding what you spend today by keeping a spending diary for a month or two. So try to categorize your expenses into fixed expenses, which are regular amounts that don't generally change much. So your monthly expenses like rent or car payments or bills that you receive less often like car registration or insurance. Um, the second category are flexible expenses that um, are necessities, but they fluctuate. Um, you have a little bit more control over how much you spend, such as groceries or electric bills, but um, they're, they are expenses that are necessities. And then you have discretionary expenses that are dollars you choose to spend, but you don't necessarily have to, like things like going to the movies or going out to eat. So if you can track your spending for a month or two, you can understand the different expenses that you have and start identifying ways to really carve out that five or $10 a week that you can set aside for emergency savings. Um, for example, I try to avoid coffee shops, although I know some of my team members would say that I'm always at Starbucks, but I try to avoid coffee shops and um, make my latte at home. Actually, I did today. I was good <laughs> because otherwise that's about $5 a day that I'm spending um, at the local coffee shop. So I try to make it at home instead. Um, also, in-app purchases on um, applications on your mobile phone. You know, you pay 99 cents here, $1.99 there, it quickly adds up. So those are some little ways that you can find some dollars that you can put away for emergency savings. And one other tip, if you um, leverage online shopping sites that have one-click checkouts, Avoid the one-click checkouts. Um, instead, make sure you add something to your cart and let it sit there for a few days and really come back to it and make sure that you really need it as opposed to just wanting it. So those are some tips for trying to find just a few dollars here and there that you can tuck away for emergency savings. That's excellent, excellent advice, uh, Darlene. We, we do have one question uh, here from, from the community. And the question asks, 
how much should a service uh, member aim to save an emergency fund? What should be the, the targets or their, their goals for saving? So I can start um, sure. and then I'm, um, Melinda and Jerry would love to chime in. Uh, so start small, right? So there have um, been research studies that found that 40% of Americans could not come up with $400 for a financial emergency. So I'd say start small. If you can save $10 a week, that's $512 by the end of the year. And you've got your base level of savings, right? And so then don't stop there. Keep building on it. So uh -huh. then you can look at trying to save enough to cover up to three months of expenses. But each time you're sort of making progress towards the long-term goal of having not only short-term emergency savings, but also longer-term savings for your future. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I've got to I've got to echo Darlene's comment. You know, every military family has different circumstances. When I was a young E5, I was single and had no children. So my savings goal might be different. Um, when, but uh, for a young staff sergeant in the United States Army today who is married and has two children, that individual um, will have a different goal. And mm -hmm. but I, I think the important thing just like getting ready for my physical fitness test. I, I go back to that again. Uh, again, it's, we are talking about financial readiness, your, your overall readiness um, to, to be able to handle what life throws at you. I think that the individual needs to, to examine themselves and figure out what they can do. And if, um, if it sounds pretty easy to you to save that $10 a week that Darlene suggested, I suggest you, you stretch a little further mm -hmm. or maybe try $10 a week for four weeks or six weeks and then increase it to $15 a week. But what the important thing, I believe the most important thing that you can do, it's not about the amount of money you're saving. It's about creating the habit of saving and rewarding yourself when you hit certain milestones to encourage that continued behavior. Great advice. So uh, we have another question here. Um, and, and it asked, uh, many people receive debt consolidation offers in the mail. I know, I know that I do uh, as well. Uh, when should someone consider going down the debt consolidation uh, route? So um, Melinda, did you want to take this one? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, we would always recommend before you even consider a debt consolidation that you talk to an NFCC certified credit counselor first. Um, you may be able to self-administer a repayment plan without taking on a loan, or you may be eligible for what's called a debt management plan through mm -hmm. NFCC organizations, whereby we consolidate all of your debts into one manageable monthly payment your interest rate on average is cut in half. Most of our clients are out of debt in three to four, no more than five years. And their monthly payment by combining all those debts is reduced significantly. It helps with the household budget. So I would say first start talking with the NFCC credit counselor before you take on that debt consolidation loan. One of the dilemmas, as Barry's aware, at being with the National Foundation for Credit Counseling is clients that have taken on a debt consolidation loan, but they don't cut up those old credit cards and they end up back in the same situation again. They have a debt consolidation loan and now balances on those credit cards that didn't get closed out. So what's so cool about the debt management plan is that whole behavior change and getting debts paid down and eliminated. Okay. Jerry or Darlene, anything to add uh, in, in regard to um, when someone should consider uh, debt consolidation uh, loans or debt consolidation offers? I would, I would add to Melinda's comments. And, and one of the things that I would caution in that debt consolidation offer is that there are costs to that. Um, there is either an up, upfront fee that is added on to your overall balances, or there is a fee that is charged throughout the term 
of the debt consolidation loan. And in, you know, in the long run, uh, you may wind up paying less, but through an NFCC agency, a debt management plan or just a self-imposed discipline of paying back your debts according to your own timeline, according to a waterfall theory, paying off the highest interest rate card first, closing it out, adding that payment to the next highest credit card interest rate. That waterfall theory is a, a method to self-impose um, your own debt management plan and to pay off your debt. But uh, if you have any questions about the offer or whether you're able to do it yourself, I highly recommend that the individual contact their NFCC agency first for just some one-on-one -on -one advice uh, with, no, with no ulterior motives. The NFCC is a trusted agency that will provide the best advice possible without um, any motive for a sale of any kind or um, any other motive than your best interest. Thanks, thanks. Okay, I don't see any uh, additional questions. So what, what we'd like to do then uh, in closing, we'd like to provide uh, each of our panelists an opportunity to provide some, some final thoughts um, on where people can learn more about you and the military services uh, offered. So we'll, let's start with Darlene. Thank you so much. And thank you for the opportunity to be here and for the fruitful discussion that highlighted the unique financial needs and transitions that military members and their families face and um, underscore the, the need for financial education and capability programs and counseling services to help with that day-to-day -day money management and short-term savings and debt management, long-term savings and retirement planning. So in addressing those specific needs, I think Jerry mentioned um, the importance of um, understanding that each situation is unique and I think that's one of the great um, opportunities with working with a member agency of the National Foundation for Credit Counseling. And then at Wells Fargo, we've uh, tried to help meet service members and their families where they are through our hands-on banking for military program and our collaborations with NFCC and others. So please visit us at handsonbanking.org or email us at hobinfo at wellsfargo.com. That's H-O-B-I-N-F-O at wellsfargo.com to learn more about our resources and our efforts to advance military financial readiness. Thank you, Darlene. Jerry, any um, closing thoughts? Well, there are a number of uh, resources and agencies out there that are there to help. And the National Foundation for Credit Counseling is one of, ours, uh, one of our supported organizations that we have a tremendous amount of confidence in and the work that they're doing for military, uh, military members, veterans and their families has uh, been unsurpassed by any others that we've worked with. I also wanna give a shout out to the Association of Military Banks of America. I sit on the board of directors of AMBA, the Association of Military Banks of America, and uh, we do what we can and uh, help um, engage the conversation to provide supportive resources for military members um, wherever they are in the world to ensure that their finances can be managed successfully. So connect with AMBA online. Um, Handsonbanking.org is our free financial education platform as Darlene mentioned. And then a couple of other nonprofits that I'm aware of that have um, uh, resources for you. The uh, Military Family Advisory Network, MFAN, has a program called MillSense. And that is a program where you can uh, learn more about budgeting um, and manage your budget uh, more effectively. There's a lot of tools like that out there. Um, but these are just some of the organizations that we work with to um, help make sure we're placing resources in the hands 
of military members, their families when they're separated, veterans as they transition. We want to be sure as many people as possible have access to these resources. Thanks. Thank you, Jerry. But let me, any, any closing thoughts? Yes, you can find us on the web at credit.org. And you can also reach us if you want to email us any questions at education at credit.org because our mission is financial education. So in the future, if you think of something and you want some neutral objective advice, email us at education at credit.org. Also, when you visit our website, credit.org, there's a chat bubble there if you want to type in a chat question. My personal motto is underspend and oversave. So um, it's all about, when we talk about underspend, spending less than we earn. Um, we advocate on all the classes that we teach um, on military installations about just auditing your monthly bills. And look at your reoccurring bills. And even if it's a small amount of money that you can save on a reoccurring bill, multiply that times 12 months, and suddenly you're starting to get some, some chunks of money there. So whether it's a cell phone plan or some other program, um, even being aware of what we're spending at the grocery by you know, not purchasing things that are at eye level, you know, reach up high or reach down low and look at that shelf. Um, label where it tells you how much per ounce because the items are very deceiving and when you start noticing it you're like wow going generic brand and going this size i'm saving like half the amount and i may be even be getting twice as much so just those little tips to underspend and to learn to oversave and then at our website um, we have a sign up there for newsletters and also to follow our blog great Thank you, Melinda. And uh, thank you to our military members, families, and veterans for joining us today. Thank you for your service uh, and your sacrifice. And many thanks to our distinguished group of expert panelists, as well as all those who have served and protected our great country. I would also like to thank those of you in the audience uh, as well. And we hope uh, that you found this discussion today uh, helpful. Uh, as a reminder, for more information, uh, you can check out nfcc.org and be sure to follow us on Twitter at NFCC, also on Facebook uh, and YouTube. Again, goodbye for now and uh, thanks again for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.